Okay, hi everyone and welcome to a new video concerning Firebase real-time database with Python. So if you didn't know this, this is a series playlist concerning CRUD for Firebase real-time DB using Python. So in a previous video, we discussed how to create the data. In this video, we're going to discuss how to update. However, you can watch this video as a standalone. It's not at all dependent on the other videos. So if you're only interested in update, you can only watch this. All right, so let's get started. So this is my console.firebase.google.com. This is where we go when we want to access our Firebase projects. So these are my available Firebase projects. So these are just demos. They're not legitimate projects. So this is the project we created in the create data video. Again, it's not necessary that you watch it. However, we can just use this database. So if we go to it, so this is where we get the project overview or the dashboards for this project. And we get all the sort of information about this project and we get access to the different features that Firebase provides. So I have a video on authentication with Firebase and Python. And I have a video on storage as well. So you can check that out if you're interested. Now we're interested in database for this video and we're mainly using the real-time database. So this is some sample data I cooked up just for this tutorial. So it's sort of a to-do list type of thing. And let's just ignore this right now. So it's a to-do list. The different children for to-do list are Monday, paper, and then inside Monday, we have a paper, we have a pull request, we have a deadline. Now I'm going to explain the data more in depth in a minute, but first let's just set up Python and Firebase and how to connect it and use it with um, with uh, the real-time database. So I have a Python project here. So previously this is an empty Python project with only one file. Now, if you're confused about this because you've never used Firebase with Python, then I do suggest going back to my video about creating data for real-time DB. All right, but I'll just skim it in all cases. So we have to import Firebase. Now Firebase is the library we use to interact with Firebase. So you can pip install Firebase. And now I already have it, but obviously you would have to wait for it to install. All right, so then you get these credentials from the Firebase project that you have by initializing an app. Then you just say Firebase equal Firebase dot initialize app and you use that those credentials for the configuration to have an application within Python. And then you say that you want to work with the database part using this line right here. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, for more detail, you can go back to that previous video. All right, so now we want to update data. We want to learn how to update already existing data within the database. But like I said, I want to kind of go further inside the data and actually truly understand it and the hierarchy that it comes with. All right, so I have this to-do list right here. Let's just collapse everything. All right, so we're working with to-do list A right now, and I'll explain what to-do list B is in a minute. Um, by the way, I forgot to mention that the Firebase, you can check the documentation um, right here. So I had it open for that. So you can check the documentation right here, and you can see um, all sorts of functions and methods that you can use to be able to interact with your different Firebase features. So I'll link the documentation in the description if you're interested. It's a very good library. It's a very well-coded library, and it's super useful. All right, so back to the actual tutorial. Let's just close this. Okay, so we have this to-do list A. We have Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and they're the children for the to-do list. So these are the different days of the week. And for each day of the week, we have some things that we want to do. So for Monday, we have a paper, and this paper has a child, and the child is its deadline. So the deadline is 12 p.m. It's a child for paper. And with Monday, we also have a pull request type of um, to-do list item. All right, then we have uh, Tuesday and it's sort of the same schema. So as you can see, we have, um, we, we just have the day of the week and its children are the different tasks that we are going to perform. And for each task, the child is a um, deadline. We can add more children to the, um, let's say details and say first submission. So just so we can say that it, this doesn't necessarily have to have the same schema. Okay, so this is pretty much how to-do list A works. So it's just this sort of hierarchy of to-do list items and 
in an ideal sense, this would be related to some sort of application you have that has a GUI for to-do list, and you know what I mean. All right, so to-do list B, what is to-do list B? Let's just go back here. So to-do list B contains actually the exact same information as to-do list A, but here's the difference. So to-do list B uses the automatically generated keys that Firebase gives its data when you push it. So when you push data to the Firebase um, database, it generates this key, but you can choose to create your own key like here. So here the key itself is project and the child is deadline. The key here is paper and these are its children. Meanwhile, in the second to-do list, there is a different format. So this is because you can have your data in different formats and updating in the sense of a randomly generated key versus a known key can be quite different. That's why we're going to learn how to do both. And that's why it's very important to know how to do both. So if you want to know the difference between how to create data with a key versus without, you can go back to the creation video. All right, so let's just start with to-do list B A, A and learn how to update data when we have this sort of hierarchy with no randomly generated keys that Firebase provides. All right, so we, we want to update deadline for a paper and we want this deadline to be 1 p.m. and not 12 p.m. All right, so what do I have to do? I just have to do the following. So db.child and I have to build a path using the child function. So if I go back here, I have to do list A, Monday, paper, deadline. All right, so it's to do list A dot child Monday dot child paper. All right, so dot update. And then I have to specify deadline should be 1 p.m. So that's pretty much it. Now, if you run it, all right, so we're done. We go back here. And the deadline is now 1 p.m. There is no need to refresh. So this is how you update. And everything else is simply kind of changing the path that you have. So everything else is simply just building different sort of paths, you could say. So we're updating the uh, here. We're updating the deadline to be 1 p.m. Then we can create a different path to access different data and update it. So it's relatively straightforward. Now, how can we update? Uh, more than one location at the same time. So luckily, the Pyrebase API provides us with a way to update more than one location. So we're just going to do that now. Okay, so we have data and data is essentially a document. So it follows the kind of document format that we use for interacting with Firebase data. So data has um, to-do list A, Monday, paper. So this is the first path that we're doing. And um, we want to update, and we have another document within, and we call this uh, details, details, and we rename details to be version 2. All right, so this is the first update that I'm performing. This is how I'm going to perform mass updates, you could say. All right, then I comma separate the different updates that I want to perform and get a second path. So to do list A, and then... Tuesday, and then um, let me just film video, and then I want to update the deadline to be, uh, you could say, 7 p.m. All right, so to perform this mass update, all I have to do is db.update and just give it data. Now, there's something that we're going to notice, so if we run it, Let's just wait, all right. So we go back here. Now we can see that for Tuesday film video, the deadline did get updated to 7 p.m. and details did get updated to version two. However, what's the issue here? That deadline for this one completely disappeared. Now, why is that? This is because when you write this document right here, you're specifying the exact child for this path. It's a bit annoying, so maybe it's not exactly recommended, you could say, but it's just the way it is. So that's how you have to do it. You would have to either write everything else or just perform different types of updates by not using this function. All right, so that was just a note. Now, the next thing we want to do is that we want to update in to-do list B. Now we want to perform, let me just 
comment please we want to perform the exact same thing for to do list b all right so this is to do list b and like we said we have the keys here the the automatically generated keys by firebase right so how are we going to update deadline when i cannot write a path why do i say i cannot write a path because just look at this so i know this i know db.child.todo list a monday paper i know the path but in this case, I don't. So I just don't know what goes here. I don't know what this key is. Now, if you're an app developer, most of the time you will not know what this, um, you could say, key will be. So how do you access it? You're going to have to have a different approach. So let's just go back. All right. So our different approach is that we have to first extract the keys that we want. Okay, so let's say I want to update the deadline right here, so the same as we did in the previous part of the tutorial, but back then we had paper as the actual key here, it was the ID for this part. Alright, so how, are, how am I going to approach this when I actually do not know the key itself? My, the first step is to extract the key, like we said. So here's what I have to do. I have to say Monday tasks, so that's the name of my variable, and I'm just going to call these db.child to do list a dot child monday dot get now here i have the actual um, tasks that are within monday now i'm sorry this is to do list b and i can print this so i just have to do the following so for task in monday tasks dot each so each is the function that allows me to iterate over these i can print print task.val or I can print task.key. Now, why is it like this? I'll explain in a minute. So let's just run it. All right, so here I get the two different objects within Monday. So I have the paper and I have the pull request. And this is, so deadline 12 p.m., name is paper and then name pull request. And here I have the respective IDs or keys for each of these documents. So now I know how to get the key. It's pretty simple. All I have to do is get the key for the tasks. But how do I get the key where the actual name is paper? So it's pretty simple. If tasks, tasks.val, all right, so what does this give me? Tasks.val is a dictionary like this. So it's something like this. I want to get what the name is, so I just say sub, so this is how we, we deal with dictionaries in Python, and we want to say that this name is equal to paper, and when that is, we just want to save it in a variable, so we just say um, key that we want is equal to task.key, and that's how we're getting the key of the task that has the name paper, so that's how we're getting the key we want to update, all right? Then I can proceed how I do things, so db.child, so this is essentially the same thing, so to do list b dot child monday dot child key dot update deadline to one 1 p.m. Okay, no, this should be key. So the key variable. So, okay, so to check now deadline here is 1 p.m. So this is how you would update in the case where you don't know the um, ge generated key. So we'd have to kind of iterate and get it using the each function and the val function and just perform different if and for statements that you can just get what you want, then perform the update. So obviously this changes depending on the context, so depending on your database, but now that you're armed with the tool to be able to just have the logic of how to do things here, you can probably do it yourself. So thank you very much for watching this video. Stay tuned for the next video. We're going to discuss how to delete data in uh, the Firebase real-time database. So stay tuned for that and please leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed. Bye.